as well as a huge number of other honors, including uh, the New Prize, uh, the Polio Prize, various honorary doctorates. <clears throat> He's a member of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, uh, of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and Taiwan's um, Academia Sinica. Uh, today, Professor Yao directs the hugely successful the Institute for Interdisciplinary Information Sciences at Xinhua University, uh, where he is dean. Uh, the institute is rapidly becoming a magnet for talented, uh, new, uh, talented young students and faculty. Uh, if I may add, on a personal note, uh, today is a very special day for me. Thirteen years ago, uh, when I had just graduated from college and uh, I was studying graduate school, one of the first courses that I took was a course on communication complexity theory, which is a beautiful, mathematically rich theory with vast practical applications. The theory captivated me so much that to this day, um, it's one of the main focuses of my research. Uh, back in the day, it was unimaginable to me that uh, one day I would have the honor of introducing, in a seminar, in, in a seminar of the founder of that theory. Will this please uh, join me in welcoming Professor Yao. It's going to be a major focus of growth for computer science. And uh, uh, today, after having a chance of speaking to 10 faculty members in the department, I'm truly impressed by the diversity and quality of uh, research in this department. And uh, furthermore, uh, I've found out that uh, there are very interesting interdisciplinary research going on uh, right in this building. And, uh, so what I would like to talk about is to uh, uh, focus my perspective about interdisciplinary research, taking the view from a theory of computer, uh, theory of computation scientist. And uh, it, it helps to uh, uh, look at the history of theory of computation. And uh, actually we'll find that uh, theory of computation from the very beginning is a interdisciplinary science. And uh, uh, if we look at the uh, theory of computation tree, and uh, certainly from the famous Turing machine, Turing's paper, and uh, in modern times, the carbon-11 uh, Cook theory of uh, MP completeness. Uh, so that's the basic uh, question of interest in theory of, of, of computation. Uh, what does, does it mean to be a computation and uh, uh, how much time and space that is needed for doing a computation? Uh, these are the kind of questions that uh, the heart of the uh, theory of computation is about. However, uh, theory of computation didn't live through all these decades without other input. It's not like that there's a a, a, a small group of people uh, who are thinking about complex classes every day of their life. Actually, there has been a lot of uh, input coming from the various disciplines and quite often coming from foreign lands. And uh, 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 each person or each group brings about some new content to theory competition. Uh, 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 Don Knuth brings the more practical job of programmers uh, namely that the need for developing algorithms and data structures uh, into this uh, previously very formal setting. And uh, uh, Andre Komogorov and brings uh, the algorithmic uh, information. And actually, I think that it's, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, I would like to point out that it's not just a one person. Actually, uh, Komogorov have produced uh, many very famous uh, theory of computation scientists. I think that uh, Roy Levin uh, and uh, uh, not, not Roy, <laughs> uh, 
uh, Levin and and uh, uh, Sasha Resvorov. I think they 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 were they were both and and so his students uh, came with a tremendous impact on the theory of computation. And uh, now there's this uh, uh, around the same time as 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 Knuth introduced the algorithm and data structures. There's a very strong influence from Paul Ardish and the school of combinatorics in, in, in Hungary. And uh, even more than Kolmogorov, I think that we can find many important computer scientists uh, coming from the Erdős tradition that work in uh, the United States today. And uh, 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 of course, Shannon's information theory being a distinct from computation theory. So information theory, it measures how many bits do you need to, to, to do in order to communicate a certain task. And the whole theory of computation is that how much time does it take in order to do computation. So these are two pillars of, the, uh, of information science. And uh, uh, so it, 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 it uh, turns out that it has a very big impact on computer theory of computer rotation too. And uh, roughly, when I think about this, in the earlier periods, it's really uh, the theory of computation tree is just growing more robust with uh, inputs from different cultures, from, from with different specialty. Many of them brought with them new techniques which uh, solved problems that had been open for many years. I personally had witnessed quite a number of, of such problems that I, I previously had uh, looked at just uh, totally helplessly. And, but, but somehow people with um, a different view can solve the problem. And, uh, but then, uh, in the more, more later years, uh, it turns out that the theory of computation people have gathered enough uh, wisdom and the strength in their techniques and concepts that they started to, uh, to, to outreach, that they start to apply this set of tools and concepts to uh, uh, other disciplines. So the first victim is Shannon's information theory. And, and the, uh, the reason being that in the 1970s, in the mid-1970s, uh, there is a huge event uh, by Diffie and Hellman and uh, that was the beginning of the public key cryptography. And public key cryptography looked very puzzling from the point of view of Shannon's information theory because according to Shannon's information theory, you should not be able to do that. And uh, 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 it, it turns out that uh, this makes people realize that in order to develop a useful cri cri cryptography, you have to, to mingle these two disciplines together. You, you, you put constraint on what kind of information you are able to obtain. So, uh, uh, and of course, I think uh, bioinformatics and computational biology and quantum computing and uh, economics and games, uh, etc. And so, uh, theory of computation, it uh, has a very rich history of being interdisciplinary. And uh, this, in some sense, it's really a, uh, uh, it, it's a special case of the general phenomena of the relationship between computer science and other disciplines. Well, firstly, uh, it has been known, even from the very beginning, that, that, uh, that, that a computer science, com computers uh, are very useful to apply to uh, other disciplines like physics, biology, and engineering. And uh, in the early, the, the very early days, I think people are mainly interested in numerical solutions. And, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, schematically, this uh, could represent the relationship. The CS and the, the other disciplines, they have some core areas. And, and uh, uh, you know, that the, the, the most famous people in the fields do work on it. And, uh, uh, but they intersect. In a in a tangential way, I think that 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 uh, that that we we, uh, we we quite often heard computer scientists when they work with uh, people in other fields would uh, kind of uh, complain that uh, they were just being regarded as tools that, that you don't really get the credit you 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 deserve. 
But I think things are changing. That uh, uh, I think that computer scientists have got respect from other disciplines uh, in more recent times, and uh, uh, and uh, 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 the new trend is that th that the interaction between the, the the two different disciplines they are seeking a principled solutions, and uh, uh, that involves the core and core uh, interaction. So now, how do you how do you uh, uh, measure? Are there some benchmarks to uh, uh, have some informal idea on uh, whether the interaction is successful in, in, in interdisciplinary? Well, firstly, uh, it's certainly uh, to be nice to have to be a true collaboration between scientists in different disciplines, and uh, uh, it produces results of significance to both disciplines. And uh, also, a good sign is that some of the results will be published outside of the uh, traditional computer science, the, uh, the, the journal or conferences. So uh, let me give you some, some examples of this. Uh, the first example will be uh, computer science and economics, uh, in particular about uh, uh, auction theory. To, uh, uh, in we, 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 we are interested in how to design auction rules so that you can maximize the, the revenue. Uh, the second would, is uh, uh, computer science and physics. And uh, we'll uh, discuss one particular quantum information science uh, topic, uh, namely super cloning. And uh, uh, now, uh, there, are, there, are, there are even more general uh, questions that are of interest to many disciplines. For example, the nature of randomness and, 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 and of tremendous interest both for science and also for lottery designers. I mean, how do you certify something is random? Okay, so um, uh, auctions, we have something for sale, say an apple, and the problem is how much are the bidders willing to pay? And we certainly can ask the bidders and they probably will tell you a different uh, number and uh, the auction design, uh, the, a particular type of auction design that the economists are interested in, there are reasons for it, is that they would uh, want to design the rules in such a way that the, uh, uh, that the bidders, they will not lie. They will, they, it's, it's not, it doesn't do them any good to lie about the, the result. And uh, uh, now, the mechanism design, uh, is the, the art and the, uh, the science of doing uh, economic uh, uh, theory. And the auction theory is a, a particular type, is a subfield of mechanism design. So uh, the, the economists w want to design the market, in, in essence, wants to be the engineers. And uh, uh, design an auction uh, uh, is sometimes called the reverse uh, game theory. And uh, now, uh, exactly what's the goal of a seller? Well, uh, the most common goal, uh, the first one is a, um, I think it, it looked pretty strange to me uh, at first sight, it's to maximize social welfare. It, it, it's just saying that, that uh, uh, it, economists uh, would like to, to design the rules so that the items will go to the buyers who value it most. Okay, so um, I think that that uh, it's so sort of for the public goods. For example, a government wants to do to auction off the spectrons, then uh, that's a good thing. It's not necessarily to make money. And, this, and the other one, is, uh, it seems to be more normal to me, is to maximize the revenue, to, to earn as much profit as possible. And now, uh, what are the common auctions? Well, uh, let's just consider the uh, sealed bid auction. So, so, so the bidders just put the numbers what they are willing to pay inside an envelope. And the, the seller would uh, uh, collect those envelopes and look at those numbers and make a decision on who to sell this item to and at what price. And now, the obvious one is the first price. The, the first price is just that I will open up and I will just uh, sell the apple to the highest bidder and at the price that is, is provided. Okay. 
And uh, now, uh, this auction has an unpleasant property in that um, it's, it's not truthful. So uh, suppose I value the apple much more than others. Say I value it at $10, but I know that the others would only pay $2 for it, uh, more or less, have some information. Then I certainly wouldn't want to pay $10 for it. I, 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 will, I will just say $5, and then I have an incentive to lie about it. Now, but the second, uh, the next auction uh, is a very ingenious one, and, uh, and uh, uh, it's called the second price auction. It's saying that the seller would look at all the numbers and still give the item to the top bidder, but the price is determined by the next highest bidder. Okay, now you can see that this is a truthful mechanism because uh, it doesn't help the winner to lie about his. And uh, the victory is a uh, Nobel Prize winner. And uh, uh, yeah, so now the second prize option for selling a single item is a truthful mechanism that actually solves the problem of maximizing social welfare, because the right person uh, whom value it most get the, get, get the item. Now, can this be done for revenue uh, maximization? It turns out to be a much more hairy problem. So uh, let's say that a single seller wants to sell k different items to n buyers, and uh, uh, buyer J uh, we hold values independently distributed according to some distribution. So in other words, the seller has some information about the behavior of the, of the bidders, but doesn't know the exact number. Now, so the seller, based upon that information, how can the seller design a truthful mechanism so that it's uh, going to bring the maximum profit? Okay, so, so now we are, we are talking about a, 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 a more general context. So we are selling k different items, not just one single item. Now, the, the, uh, when there's one item, there's a famous uh, work by uh, Meyerson and uh, uh, solved the problem essentially uh, uh, completely and uh, uh, for which he received the Nobel Prize. And now, the k bigger than one, case is a problem that's still uh, open even uh, if there's uh, uh, even if there's only one, uh, uh, one buyer and now uh, let's imagine that a seller wants to sell a large number of k items to one single buyer uh, what would be some of the simple mechanisms you can think of one would be to just selling the items separately is saying that for each one of them I'm just going to use the Marsden way of, of, of doing it. Or selling them as a bundle. It's saying that let me just do the bundling. That you either take, take all of them at a certain price or you, 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 will not, you will not get it. Now, uh, let's look at the, the k equal to one, I, uh, uh, k equal to one, uh, one item case. And uh, uh, this is the simplest case where one seller has one item to sell to a single buyer. And uh, now, uh, if you look at the information that the seller has, then the, the revenue that, uh, if I want to, the seller wants to sell, uh, put up a price P, then the uh, probability that the, uh, uh, the, the, the bidder uh, will accept this price is one minus f of p. And so the expected value is p times one minus f p. So therefore, it's clear that if you follow uh, this line of, of, of design, then you certainly, uh, you should uh, pick a p which uh, maximizes this uh, very simple uh, expression over here. And uh, uh, it turns out uh, this is the, the this is the best way for doing it, even if you invent all sorts of complicated uh, way of, of doing the processing. Now, how about two items? Just two items, one buyer, and uh, now the distribution 
for the two items uh, are even uh, just the same IID. So uh, let's look at the example where the item values are uh, in independent, independently identical uh, 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 distributions uniformly on two numbers, one and two. So it could be one dollar and it could be two dollar and this is a 50-50 uh, 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 proposition. And selling separately, it turns out that the optimal value is equal to one. And you can see that you can, you can have several different ways of achieving this optimal value. If you just set the price equal to one, then you know the buyers will definitely buy it and you get one. And if you set the price to be two, then there's one half of the probability and uh, uh, the expected revenue is one. It turns out that this, this is the optimal way of doing it. Uh, however, looking at, uh, well, uh, it's not. If you sell it as a bundle, you can, you can get re revenue uh, bigger than, big, than, than, than two. Uh, you can price bundle it at three, then the, the, the probability of your getting accepted is three quarters. And so therefore the revenue is, is, is 2.25. Okay. So uh, it says that sometimes bundling is a, a, and now you know it why in the supermarket or something that they, w they want to do this. And it, it turns out that, 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 uh, uh, that uh, it's not necessarily true that either selling separately or selling as a bundle always gives you the optimal one. So let's just look at the last one. Okay. So uh, you have three items. You, uh, the, the, uh, uh, you, have, you, you have an IID uh, it's with equal probability for, the, the, well, so uh, the, uh, the bidder has probability one sixth of uh, value it at, at one dollar, and the probability of one half of value it at two dollar, and the probability <coughs> of one, one third value it at four dollars. Then uh, it turns out that the optimal solution is a very uh, in intriguing uh, solution. It says that you should buy a lottery, which allows you to have a 50% chance of winning, and, and uh, you pay $1 for this privilege. Or you just buy both surely for $4. And, and this turns out to be the optimal solution. So you can see that, uh, 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 in essence, things can get uh, uh, arbitrarily complex when you have larger instances. And now, uh, now let's, let's look at some progress uh, that recently that has been uh, made by uh, the researchers. Uh, you want to get the maximum value, you have, uh, you're starting with one buyer, you have K items, and uh, uh, the uh, SREV, S revenue, represent the maximum value if you sell each item separately. And the BREV, B revenue, is the maximum revenue by selling all items as one grand bundle. So the question is that how, how well uh, can they uh, achieve the optimal one? And Harden and Nissan started this line of investigation showing that they are not, not too bad, that uh, they can achieve a logarithmic factor. And uh, they left open what the true behavior is. And uh, 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 next year, this problem uh, 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 was solved. And, uh, 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 and, and, and it says that, that although the uh, uh, selling separately and, uh, and, and the bundling is not always the right solution, but uh, it says that selling separately can achieve a factor one over log k. And uh, uh, selling as a bundle, if all the distributions are identical, actually achieves uh, within a constant factor. And uh, now, uh, uh, last year, uh, this led to uh, a, a, an elegant result by Bobby F. et al. And they showed that, 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 that actually, uh, if you think about selling it separately, and also selling it as a bundle, and you see that uh, which one of them will give you better revenue, and you take that, it turns out that's achieved mass maximum. So that's a, 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 now what about the more general case? And uh, uh, earlier this year, uh, at SOTA, uh, 
uh, this paper solved that for general the n and the k, there's a simple mechanism that can achieve the uh, constant factor optimal revenue. And uh, now, uh, so, so far, this is very uh, thinking like a computer scientist. You, you think about uh, the approximation algorithm, you think about how to design simple ones, and you analyze them. And, and, uh, uh, but in the process, one can get a lot of structural insight. You can prove some structural uh, uh, theorems which characterize how the near optimal uh, algorithm must look like. And uh, uh, if you uh, dig and apply those things that further, uh, it has the consequence that it shows that, that the, the revenue concept under both the Bayesian and the dominant strategy are equivalent up to a constant factor. And I don't, uh, uh, I don't want to, to, to define what this means, except that, that uh, this kind of question is very, very of interest to economists. <laughs> and and they, they know for the one item case, they can prove that these two things are actually exactly equivalent uh, in terms of, uh, of, of revenue. But they uh, couldn't make any real progress when there is, is it's, uh, 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 for, for more items and more buyer. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so I think that, that, that uh, it, it's encouraging that uh, as computer scientists get involved and bring in their specialty, and actually they, they can solve problems that uh, the economists are interested in. Hmm? Is this also with IID? No IID. Oh, no, IID. No, no IID. Everything is that. And, and uh, uh, now uh, you can see that the hard Nissan papers published in the EC, uh, which is a, a, a conference uh, with both computer scientists and economists uh, participating, becoming really the hot uh, uh, conference for, for that field. And uh, the Lee and Yao papers published in pr Proceedings of the National Academy of Science and uh, uh, and also these results are of interest to uh, uh, both fields. The next item I'd like to bring up is the um, quantum information uh, in terms of super cloning. And replicating information certainly has diverse applications in information science, technology, biology, art, movies, etc. And can now copy machine, uh, machine that can make copies have been around for many, many years. And uh, uh, the, a question uh, people asked uh, very early on is that, is it possible to invent a microscope, uh, a microscopic copying machine that can replicate uh, atoms and molecules kind of in a precise manner? So uh, unfortunately, there is a no cloning theorem. And uh, it says that copying at a quantum scale uh, is not possible. In other words, more precisely, uh, suppose you want to take an input, a, 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 an atom or a molecule, and you like to output two copies. And uh, now if you plug in the quantum mechanics requirement, it, 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 it cannot work. So it says that it's not possible to have quantum copying machines. And, uh, this is not entirely negative because this really uh, is an intuitive basis for the uh, uh, security of quantum cryptography. So it makes it possible for people to design uh, uh, encryption schemes that even the most powerful computing machines, uh, even quantum computers, will not be able to, to break it. Now, uh, no cloning, certainly, uh, it's, it, it's no good for uh, information scientists. And now, what about approximate cloning? People ask questions that relax the exact copy. So perhaps you only uh, clone it approximately, or perhaps you want to do the cloning, probabilistic cloning. Wh what that means is that, that you try to make a copy. And there's an indicator which tells you whether you have succeeded or not. If it uh, 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 succeeds, you want the result to be, to be, to be near perfect. 
So uh, many special cases have been studied. Is it possible to find some general rules? And uh, the probabilistic processes often have very good performance. What are the ultimate limits? And now here's the, here's the answer. And actually, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fairly general. Essentially, uh, for any quantum system, any non-trivial quantum system, uh, these limits apply. And uh, now, uh, let's formulate it in, the, uh, in a way that computer scientists or information theorists would, would, would like to, to, uh, to proceed. We, 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 a replication process would take n copies, and uh, uh, you would produce delta n uh, additional copies. And so delta n, uh, let's say that uh, it grows like a power of, of n. And alpha would be called the replication rate. So uh, if r sub alpha is less than 1, then you only produce a much smaller number than the original copy. If alpha is bigger than 1, then uh, you're producing just a tremendous number of, of copies. Now, uh, the theorem uh, for this, uh, it turns out that for a, 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 a typical set of states with continuous symmetry, reliable replication <coughs> requires the following thing. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it's uh, uh, alpha has to be less than 1 if you insist on a deterministic process, meaning that no failure you have to, you have, uh, or a small probability of error. And, and uh, uh, alpha, alpha, so you cannot, so if you insist on the deterministic process, you cannot produce more than a negligible number of new copies. Okay, and it can be achieved for any alpha less than one, it can be achieved. And for alpha less than two, uh, it's uh, uh, possible to make n to the alpha copy, additional copies. They, they, they all look very much like the uh, initial one. If you start with n copies, you, you would get very exponentially close to, to, to the copies. And, uh, uh, and, and, and so, if alpha is bigger than two, then you cannot do it. And, 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 and uh, for, for reason that have to do with the uh, quantum met metrology, uh, it's called the Heisenberg limit. And, and so this is, uh, paper was published in 20, 2013. And now, uh, the, uh, the proof of uh, uh, that theorem had to do with uh, the details of the physics, the quantum mechanics rules. And now, let me at a high level, to, uh, as a computer scientist, um, how would you uh, put it into the right position? And now, cloning of photons, if you look at the mathematics, it really can be modeled as a computational geometry problem in higher dimensional space. So uh, you, you, uh, you start out with, with n photons, uh, which is a a, 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 a vector in a, in a high dimensional space. And of course, we are interested in, 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 the, in, in the different type of photons. So you, you have a set uh, in high dimensional space, and you like to transform it into n plus delta n copies. So that's uh, in the abstract. They are uh, states in the high dimension. So you, you like to, to, to kind of, now unitary transformation means a, a rotation. So the question is that, can you rotate it? To make this set of vectors to be, to have a one-to-one -one correspondence very close in the neighborhood of that vector, and now for the probabilistic case, you, you have to do a projection. So, is it possible to do a rotation of this original set of vectors and project it to a low dimension so that it will look like the target instance? And uh, now, uh, quantum cloning it's uh, uh, I mean beyond the uh, the uh, nice uh, application, uh, uh, if quantum money starts to be used, then perhaps uh, a quantum copier can be exploited to, to print money. And, uh, um, and it also, it's, it's, it's very similar to the uh, generation of almost identical quantum keys for a group of users. Now, uh, uh, the last one I would like to discuss is about uh, a, 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 a something of interest to uh, uh, almost everybody. And, and uh, uh, a few years ago, in the New York Times, it, it, uh, there's a highly publicized uh, 
uh, note is saying that news researchers found a fraction of the RSA public keys in a database uh, have not been randomly generated and therefore uh, can be broken. And uh, um, uh, of course, this is not bad. Uh, of course, this is bad. It will be possible for someone to figure out the, the secret prime numbers and to, to dec decode the sensitive information. So how do you generate random numbers that you, you can sleep at night without worrying? Okay. And uh, now, uh, the, the, uh, uh, classically, the way of thinking about it, you have a string, say, n bit string. And uh, uh, you go through a, 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 a computation, a black box. So you amplify it so that you have a lot, a lot more bit. Uh, the, the, the point is that, that this very sh sh uh, kind of short random string becoming a very long random string. So, so um, you like to be able to do that. And now how, uh, if we look at the history, uh, how did people treat this problem? Now firstly, the statisticians, I think they had a, a fiduciary interest in this problem. Randomness is ours, right? And, and, and uh, 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 this, it, it, it's statistical test based. It's saying that I have this test just to measure how many ones and how many zero, and they are more sophisticated, the variance and, and, and the various kind of things which you expect a random string uh, would, would, would satisfy. And, and so this is the statistician. Now, in the 1980s, computer scientists uh, found the statistical test uh, problem uh, approach is not good because in cryptography you cannot tell the adversary that you can only break my, my, uh, my, my, my encryption using some sort of uh, statistical test. Uh, and uh, and th th there may be some really smart cryptographers, right? And, and, and uh, uh, so uh, in complexity theory, people figure out that actually you can, you, you can do something that the statist statisticians uh, really cannot dream about. It's saying that, that we want to, to generate something that we are sure uh, that can pass any statistical test that you care to resign, you care to design. And, and uh, uh, so this is kind of a complexity theory based. It's saying that, uh, that, 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 that assuming, say, factoring is hard, then uh, I can sleep at night. I mean, unless somebody wake me up saying that somebody solved the factoring problem. Right? Now, more recently, the last 10 years or so, uh, actually, uh, the, I think that the, the higher authorities in the world, that the government agency, I think they start worrying about the insecurity of these of this random numbers. And because uh, the uh, complexity theory base is that you have a huge, large enough computer, then you can break it. Okay, or you have a very smart uh, algorithm that, that you can break. So the uh, security agencies, and, 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 and they have a reason, or, or really high risk kind of type of thing, uh, the, where you cannot make any errors, uh, is there a way to design a pseudo-random number generator in such a way that uh, no amount of computing can really tell the difference between this and a totally random string? Okay, so, uh, 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 so people turn to quantum theory. Uh, and, and at the first time, you would say that, well, uh, quantum theory gives a, a obvious way of generating things because uh, it, by definition, you, you can put the zero and one. But uh, firstly, you have to amplify it. And secondly, that um, the security experts, they uh, also worry about the device you put into it. Suppose you have two quantum uh, kind of uh, measurements that you can, you can measure, and that they are manufactured by some company outside of Los Angeles or something. And how can you be sure that the guy didn't uh, tamper with it or uh, making these detectors entangled with each other? And, and so what you would like, the ideal one, is that you can have a way of generating random numbers in such a way that, that I don't need to worry about the, the device. I only need to do some checking, take a few bits, and I would see whether they violate certain 
inequality or not. I mean, that, that would be the ultimate thing. So uh, uh, this has, been, has become a pretty, pretty, pretty uh, 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 interesting subject where both uh, uh, physicists and computer scientists have, uh, I think there is a paper in Nature uh, a few years back. Uh, it's about this. And now, uh, are there some applications of this kind of uh, uh, pseudo-random number generator uh, aside from the fact that the security agencies are uh, paranoid about, about such things. And uh, in fact, uh, this actually, uh, it turns out to be very helpful for something called the device independent quantum cri cryptography. Because quantum cryptography has been around for, uh, uh, I think, 20, 30 years now. And uh, 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 people, uh, it's not trivial to, to, to confirm the security and, and so on. And, uh, uh, and more recently, people uh, started wanting to have a more high quality quantum cryptography protocols, namely that even if the device is produced by an adversary, you will still uh, can be sure that the result would be, would be secure. And uh, uh, this concept of device independent quantum cryptography was, was first raised in a, in a computer science uh, conference paper and uh, gave a simple ex uh, uh, example. And uh, uh, more recently, uh, uh, some computer scientists, uh, three computer scientists have, uh, have, have found a way to make a big progress toward implementing the device independent quantum cryptography. And the basis of that is to use the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the quantum uh, randomness test. Okay, so uh, those are my uh, uh, testimony. And uh, the conclusion is that the, the, the sciences will share methodology and, uh, uh, well, what methodology do, do sciences share? Well, you observe phenomena, you develop theory, and you test them, et cetera. And uh, um, uh, at first sight, this doesn't apply to computer science. And, and, but, but actually, even in the old days, when you, when you are developing theories and, and designing algorithms, you, you also would go through this. And, uh, and more recently, I think that the computer science take a big step forward to sort of become a, a, a typical science. Na namely that, well, not, with the internet phenomena, we, we, we have this large mass of object, and uh, uh, we are not sure what all this data means. So we, we can only take measurement and we, we, we think about it and we make theory about it and maybe we, we, uh, uh, we, we test about them. And uh, uh, so I think that uh, we have a common, uh, essentially I think that people uh, essentially have the same culture at least at, at the high level. And uh, also it turns out that the math and the algorithms, probability, complexity, approximations, I think these are becoming uh, uh, actually, we're very well known in physical sciences, and you know, physicists uh, now would say NP completeness without blinking an eye, and uh, they, they. Uh. And uh, also, there's a common subject. There are there are common abstractions in different e embodiments. For example, the many-body system. I mean, the I, I think the science initially is about few body problem, right? You, you know, how how to particles collide and, and uh, or the, um, the, uh, the uh, uh, playing the, the, uh, the uh, uh, pool. You, you have the elastic collision or something. And, and, uh, uh, but uh, if you look at all the sciences, whether in physics, uh, in, 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 in biology, and in economics, uh, and in computer science, and they all are dealing with many body systems. I mean, we are just focused on because the question we ask is, 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 is different. But the nature of the system, essentially, they are the same. OK. So there, there really is a hope. And, and it's, it's, it's something that, that, that maybe somebody already have done it, namely that, that, that you really can transplant the progress made in one area, the techniques. And you can use to derive very non-trivial things in the, in the other areas. Um, well, I believe in the in the turbo code or something, I think that people um, uh, 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 and statistical physics, people already have such observation. But I think that 
that uh, I think this, would, this should be more, more systematic. And also there are universal topics that are like, what is randomness? Is the world random? And what is information? These are things that are of interest to everybody. And, and uh, 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 let me confess at the very end that I, am I have restricted my, uh, my talk uh, to take examples from, uh, from the best case behavior. Uh, what does it mean? It means that when you look at the examples that I have listed, uh, there, there is no dispute. I mean, there's not much room to dispute about the basic framework and the, what kind of questions people are interested in. So basically, uh, computer scientists and uh, the researchers from other disciplines, you, you start from the very beginning. As, as soon as you agree this is a good problem to, 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 to solve, then uh, I think that there's no communication problem. So this is the, this is the best case behavior. Now, but uh, uh, I think that many people in this department, faculty and the students, I think that you undoubtedly have to work in uh, interdisciplinary work like some of the computational medicine work that I heard uh, uh, this morning. And, and uh, uh, now, uh, so they are really, really important. I think these are, are more important than the kind of examples that I have talked about. These are really a, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's something which has only uh, started at exploratory stage. I mean, exactly what data analysis, big data, can benefit the social scientists. And, and uh, 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 what does theory of computation say about neuroscience? I think these are, there are some papers, but, but uh, it's really at the very beginning. And the main thing is that we are dealing with incredibly complicated large systems. And, uh, and so to solve the whole problem, it would take a collaboration uh, on a different magnitude compared to uh, what we have seen so far. And uh, lastly, I'd like to, 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 to say that, that uh, at least for the, well, for the best case behavior, namely that uh, the problem is not in dispute, uh, uh, I think that there's a room for to have a new kind of compl compl computational theorists trained to think interdisciplinary. So uh, even when they are undergraduate, or certainly in the initial graduate stage, they are, uh, they learn uh, the, the rules and the, the, the fascinations in many disciplines so that when they become a researcher, uh, they don't have to work on one particular thing just saying that I, I have to do it for the next 20 years. I think that, 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 that uh, I think right now, when you look at, at all the sciences, the, the opportunities uh, is not equally. And uh, sometimes something is at a stage where big things are happening. And you want to be prepared so that when something big is happening, you have the foresight and the courage to recognize in it and uh, jump in. Because that's how you, how you do the really uh, uh, breakthrough work. And uh, lastly, uh, I think in some of the bigger departments, like CMU, they have a school of computer science. And uh, 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 there are already a lot of uh, interdisciplinary work housed in the, in the, in, in the school. And, uh, uh, and also interdisciplinary work. I think at, at UCRA, you have a IPAM program that uh, has done a lot of interdisciplinary type of, of, of seminars. And, uh, 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 but in recent years, I think there are some that are more focused on theory of computation and it's, it's, out, it, 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 it's outward look. And this is the Calvin Hall at Berkeley, it's a Simons Institute, and uh, uh, it's a, uh, something that has been running for three, four years, uh, or two, three years. And uh, uh, so they have the anatomy, and basically uh, it's kind of like a big uh, conference uh, center, except that they have long-term visitors, short-term visitors, and, and, and host a lot of themes of the uh, programs of interest to theory of computation. And, uh, uh, and also, I, I think this is now 
the, the, the lastly, that I want to advertise for the institute that I've spent many years in Tsinghua, and starting from three faculty, and now we have 16, and we have a, a, a very strong uh, uh, interdisciplinary component, especially the, 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 the physics part. And so, um, uh, uh, when I first uh, want to get a lab, and uh, uh, I just uh, 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 try to get pushed to university, and finally they uh, uh, they thought it's it's easier to get rid of me than to than, 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 <laughs> than to resist. So they uh, kind of confiscated a bowling alley f for the students, <laughs> and and uh, converted to be our lab. And and I have a a a, a Korean uh, colleague in uh, kind of a young faculty uh, in in our institute. And uh, when he heard about it, he was uh, scared. He said that. I mean, wouldn't the student just kind of uh, protest and riot? And so I said, don't worry, you know, this is not Korea. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, and, and more recently, we get some, some, some new space. We have two floors of a new building. So uh, maybe one day we'll occupy all of them. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. fascinating set of slides that related uh, the, the revenue that, that you can maximally achieve by selling items individually or, or as a bundle. And uh, the current, uh, the current uh, record uh, seems to be that there's a, a factor of 7.5. Uh, yeah, I think that it has been improved. I, I think the authors, in a later version of the paper, I think that, um, that, that it's 6.85 or something like that. I see. So slightly. Yeah, but, but the true number, uh, nobody knows. Right. And in, in the other direction, do we know that, that, there, there's, that there, there has to be at least a, a certain constant factor? Yeah, so the constant... Two or three. The constant factor, it's... Um, it, it, it's, it's uh, I think it's eight times whatever the previous number. So, so it's something like 50 or... The question I wanted to ask is, uh, in, in, uh, in computer science, we have uh, uh, drawn inspiration from, uh, from uh, biological models of computation uh, to uh, study computation. For example, uh, the perceptron model, or, or, or uh, sign representations of, of, of Boolean functions. It's a biologically inspired model. Uh, how how uh, easy is it for, for neuroscientists uh, to accept <coughs> I guess computational wisdom as a tool in their work. So basically, we, we, it's, it's fairly, fairly, uh, fairly fluid and organic for us to, uh, to draw inspiration from, yeah. from neuroscience, but how, how does it work in the opposite direction? I, uh, I, I, uh, I, think, uh, I think they tend to focus more on high level things. High level things. I think uh, uh, t today, when I talk to uh, Wes Wesley Chu, is he here? Yeah, uh, well he had, uh, Professor Chu has a lot of experience working with, um, with uh, uh, neuroscientists and, uh, uh, and he, he said that they, uh, they have built up a certain framework saying that there are five or six levels of, uh, of, of the uh, human uh, neural reaction. So, so at the at the bottom is something like at the genetic level, and and, and so, uh, 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 so each level is a little bit more higher, and uh, uh, so they are kind of debating uh, whether. Uh, so, they have created framework where uh, uh, that community they are very interested in it. So it becomes a a set of problems. Uh, I think that computer scientists wouldn't think. That's the way that we would approach it. I think we would approach it, as you say, that we should we approach it from the lower level. I think that um, because it's very easy for us to treat, to think about neural networks and that type of thing. And and but uh, the problem is that 
that nobody has been able to prove theoretically the performance of those type of things. So I think that if the problem is as hard as MP complete, uh, uh, then uh, we'll be in bad luck because uh, we'll never be able to do it. So, uh, but I think that in general, we shouldn't have a mindset saying that we want to approach it uh, in our conventional theory of computation way. I think that, I think that we have to make pro progress, making assumptions and uh, using heuristics and uh, uh, to get the result right. So I think that, 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 that I'm, I, I think this is highly unusual to, um, to um, uh, so you know, this is a, like a manifesto about the, uh, my own discipline, the theory of computation. Uh, uh, I think that if we want to, to, uh, uh, to work with other sciences, uh, we have to sometimes using some of the wisdom that they have given us. Namely, physicists are not particularly interested in whether the proof is correct or rigorous. Right? <laughs> I mean, they are interested, do you, have you got the right conclusion? Right? <laughs> right. I mean, the, med the medicine, they don't have to design a drug so that it understands all its detail. They just do some statistical tests and, uh, uh, well, it works 99.9%. .9%, so they are pretty happy about it. Right. So um, now you, you, you may also say that, well, I mean, suppose there's no aerodynamics calculation, would you get into an airplane? I mean, saying that, that for the last 99 times it flies, would you get into it 100 times? Well, that's a different question. <laughs> that's a kind of logic inference type of question. Uh, so I think that, 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 um, that we are, we go into a, 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 a interdisciplinary field. I think that we should exploit the, the, uh, the tools, that the knowledge that we have from our training. But on the other hand, the, the focus and the goal is that to come up with results in the theory and the experiments and the tests that, uh, that can actually uh, convince the other scientists. I, I, I don't think it's important to, to uh, convince our own theory of computation scientists. We, it's important to convince other scientists. And I think that's the, that's the best gauge because they are in this business of uh, doing kind of uh, natural science. Question, Jason? So I think this is a very, very talk the, the breadth and depth you have covered. So we have uh, both uh, undergrad and graduate students here. Maybe you have some advice about the, what set of four courses you would suggest to these students Oh, well, certainly algorithms. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I would say theory of computation. And uh, I think statistics. And uh, um, uh, certainly linear algebra <laughs> is something you have to do. And now, uh, after all those, I think that, um, that it depends on what you want to add. I, I think, uh, I think one doesn't need to, to uh, take as much courses as possible because it's always true that it's, it's important to learn the, the most fundamental courses by heart and, and really understand it. And, and uh, um, uh, some of the things uh, that you can pick it up, I mean, when, if you are lucky enough to uh, have a mentor uh, even at the undergraduate level, to guide you. Uh, I think that, uh, that, 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 that uh, if the mentor selects the problem at the right level, you will be able to uh, catch up and to do some reading so that you can understand the problem and thinking about it. And, 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 uh, um, and, and I think, to me, that's the best way forward. Oh, well, that's, that's that. yeah. So um, in the picture, I I draw is is the 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 the, the, uh, the most elementary problem is one 
uh, one copy and, and you two copy out. Now, uh, the n copy, uh, the, 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 the um, n, uh, 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 the m quantum system problem is that you have n identical systems that comes in and you output n and then plus delta n uh, extra uh, uh, copies. And so, of course, uh, since it's not possible to do it even for one to two, then it's clearly that uh, this dream of having n to n plus delta n is, is also an impossibility. Uh, but the point is that, that uh, suppose you start out with 1,000 copies, uh, can you produce uh, 100,000 copies? And, and uh, uh, it turns out that if you use the probabilistic cloning, cloning it's possible to do it with 10,000 uh, I mean, when it works. I mean, that's, uh, I, I, I didn't highlight it because it uh, makes the, re the, the result look imp uh, less impressive because <laughs> it says that, uh, you know, that the probability of, su of success is exponentially small. So, you know. Let's thank our speaker once again. Thank you.